A recent outbreak of leptospirosis at a dog care centre in Singapore has prompted an Australian man to bring his two four-year-old male golden retriever to Pio Vets for diagnosis and vaccination of leptospirosis. If infected, these dogs may experience kidney and liver disease, which may eventually lead to their death. But what exactly is this deadly disease? And why is it important to diagnose it early? Let's find out. This video is a veterinary educational video sponsored by Topio Vets, where veterinary medicine and surgery come alive to vet students and pet owners. Today's video will talk about the laboratory diagnosis of leptospirosis in dogs. Recently, on 1st August 2016, an Australian man brought his two dogs to Topio Vets. Recently, the dog care facility which he brought his dogs to has shut down due to the surfacing of leptospirosis cases. Hoping to protect his dogs from any infection, he sought Dr. Singh's help to diagnose and vaccinate his dogs. We will now delve deeper into the topic of laboratory diagnosis. Laboratory diagnosis First of all, it is important to understand what exactly is leptospirosis. Leptospirosis is spread by two main genera, Leptospira interrogans and Leptospira cushionary. The slides shown will describe eight pathogenic species of Leptospira. Under Leptospira interrogans, there are Canicola, Australis, Optanellis, Petislava, Hadro, Ictashimorhage, Pomona, and Gripotyphosia. As subspecies. Leptospira cushionary, on the other hand, comprises Pomona and Gripotyphosa as subspecies. Leptospirosis also leads to liver and kidney disease. There are three main methods for laboratory diagnosis of leptospirosis in dogs, namely bacterial isolation, bacterial detection, and finally serology. The first test is bacterial isolation. Bacterial isolation involves streaking a blood and urine sample into special media to isolate colonies of leptospira bacteria. This method, however, is largely more difficult to conduct, as blood and urine samples must be collected when the dog has fever. Additionally, special media is also required and the test must be conducted at recognized laboratories with biohazard safety precautions. The second test involves bacteria detection, which comprises polymerase chain reactions, PCR, and immunohistochemical tests, IHC. These tests require the use of blood, urine, and tissue samples from the liver and the kidneys. PCR involves the amplification of target samples of DNA, to help diagnose the presence of the leptospirosis disease in a dog. IHC, on the other hand, is a special staining process that involves identifying the presence of hormone receptors in the tissue cells extracted. For bacterial detection, there may be wrong negative results and further testing would be required in such instances. Additionally, it is also unable to distinguish between harmful and benign serovars. The final test is serology. Serology involves examining a sample of serum for the presence of antibodies against the leptospira antigen. This is done using the SNAP test, which will be discussed in further detail later. This method is the most commonly used method for it is the quickest to carry out. However, it is unable to distinguish antibodies that have developed due to vaccination from those which have developed due to infection. Leptospirosis SNAP test Although there are three methods of laboratory diagnosis as mentioned earlier, only serology was conducted on the two golden retrievers, Cookie and Peanut. Before the SNAP test could be conducted, blood was first extracted from the two male golden retrievers. The process of blood extraction is similar to that conducted on the Japanese pits you see here. The image below shows the SNAP test kit and illustrates the parts of the SNAP test, comprising the sample well, result window, activation hole, and activator. The process of the SNAP test begins with the extraction of the serum from the blood samples collected earlier. Serum is the component of blood that is fluid-like and contains antibodies. As shown in the video, the serum is a fluid layer on top, while the clotted blood is settled at the bottom. The serum is then added to the blue solution as shown which contains the antigen for leptospirosis. The mixture is then shook 5 times. After which, the mixture is then poured into the sample well of the SNAP test. The mixture would then rise up the result window. After a brief duration, the mixture would reach the activation hole, during which the activator would be clamped shut. After 10 minutes has elapsed since the clamping of the SNAP test, the result is red. The image shown denotes a positive result, with both blue dots being visible in the result window. This image, on the other hand, depicts what the negative result will look like, with only one blue dot being visible. Fortunately, for both dogs, the SNAP test tested negative. This means that none of them has yet to be exposed to the leptospira bacteria. Conclusions Leptospirosis is a deadly zoonotic disease, which means it can be spread from animals to humans. As a result, I'm certain some of you are interested to find out how you can protect both you and your dog from the deadly leptospirosis disease. Well, the fundamental and most common way to protect your dog is to send your dogs to your vet for vaccination plan. In the case of Cookie here, a multivalent vaccine which protected him from four serovars was issued, as monovalent vaccines are not available in Singapore. 
Also, do remember to keep your dog safe while on walks by preventing them from sniffing the urines of other animals. As for the Australian man, he is much happier now that his dogs are diagnosed to be healthy and are vaccinated as well. As can be seen, such a laboratory test is beneficial and useful for the Australian man, as this test reassures him that his dogs are free from infection. The multivalent vaccine issued also serves to protect his dogs from any future infections. For more information, you may visit topayovets.com or contact one of the hotlines section below. Thank you very much for watching and do have a wonderful day.